this video and hundreds more like it available on free Photoshop video tutorials.com. In this video we're going to learn how to replace the sky of a photo that has a really dull or a blown out sky which happens quite often for example in this picture here um, there was, it was just simply too bright and the sky wasn't all that interesting so what happens is that uh, uh, you know it, you just get a white sky essentially so if you want to spruce up this, uh, this image a little bit better what you can do is find a separate image where the sky is really nice you know, it can be one of your own images or you can try to find a, a googled image or something like that and use that to uh, replace the sky with essentially so so we have here uh, a second image here which, with our sky and what we want to do is uh, bring that in to our other image. So we're just going to select uh, the whole uh, image with uh, Control and A, copy it and go back into our uh, image that we want to work with and then we just want to paste that in. So uh, we have that on a separate layer. If we bring up here, we have two layers. We're going to uh, just move this here, just make sure that the sky is actually covering the whole the new sky image is covering the whole sky area we want to replace it with. That's important, making sure that it's all covered. Now we're going to turn off the visibility on that layer, work with our uh, initial layer, and now what we want to do is just select that um, sky. And the way we do this is go to Select and Color Range. And what we can do here is um, if you select, probably by default you have some different setting than I have here on fuzziness. Essentially you want to click on the sky and if you are in quick mask mode, make sure that you are in quick mask mode here, uh, what will happen is the red here will show you what is being selected and everything else that's not selected remains as it is. And you also get a second preview here, which means that uh, everything in white is being selected, everything in black is not being selected. And since we want to select the sky, we want to just uh, increase that fuzziness so that we are selecting all of the sky. Uh, we don't want to increase it too much so that we start seeing uh, the rest of the image here, for example, in black and white. Because if you're seeing the image here, then that means that you're selecting too much of it. We want to just select the sky. Um, so we'll select something around this region. Now you can see here that there's some little bits that are being selected, which we can then change the selection of. What's important here really is to get the most of the sky with getting the minimum amount of other things that are not the sky, essentially. So we'll click OK. And now with our lasso tool here, we're just going to hold down Alt and just go around um, unselecting everything that wasn't the sky. Over here, this is quite an easy image to work with here because it's quite easily delineated what is the sky and what isn't. The uh, cutoff is around here, so everything else, as you can see here with the marching ants, is pretty much the sky. So once we have that selected, we go back into our uh, sky layer here that we want to do the replacement with. And as we have this selected, then we're going to add a layer mask, which then gives us that uh, sky go bleeding through the, the whites of the previous sky, right? Now what we need to do with this layer here, just to make it a little bit more uh, realistic with the little edges here and the little, you know, ends of the, uh, of the, the leaves, is to just change that blend mode to uh, multiply, which will give us a much nicer transition from the trees into the sky. Let me just show that again to you. That's the normal and that is multiply. It just blends it and makes it a lot more natural. Um, the other thing that we want to do here is just make it seem more natural and make it more realistic. And at the moment, these two here, even though this is a very nice sky, they aren't really matching up. I don't see this uh, seem, seeming realistic. And this is pretty much when you're doing this yourself uh, with different images. It's just a matter of you doing this first of all. And if it looks realistic, then, you know, very good. But if it doesn't, then we're going to have to go into the second step here, which is making sure we are on our sky layer, not on the um, layer mask of the sky layer, but on the actual sky layer. All right. And we're going to go into image adjustments and hue and saturation. And this is where we can actually change the, uh, the look of the sky. Usually we'll just be playing around with the lightness of it. Unless you have the sky being some different color than you want, you can change the hue slightly. And you'll find that you're changing very, very slightly. But for this example, I don't think it actually needs to be changed all that much besides a few points here and there, which is kind of arbitrary. What we really want to do here is just play with the lightness. We want to make this a lot lighter. And as you can see, as I start making it a lot more lighter here, um, it starts um, becoming a little bit more realistic. It seems like, yes, this could actually have been the sky that was taken at the time, right? So it's just a matter of just striking that balance with the lightness um, so that it's, you know, it's, it's, you're not going to get, you know, the original 
uh, clouds as they were, but you want to exactly just make it, the priority is to make it seem like this clouds were actually part of that sky and not something, you know, fantastic. So just make it more believable. So if that means making it really light, then so be it, if that's what, you know, the image requires. So something like this, I think, fits in really well. Um, it's working really nice. So we'll click OK here. And uh, another step that you can do here is if you're not satisfied with the placement, is you can actually just move around the image, right? So you can move around the sky, but the only thing you have to do here is to unlock these two layers here so that uh, the uh, the layer mask isn't moving along with the uh, with the image so that what you're doing here is the, your, the placement of where the sky is supposed to be placed in stays fixed, and now you can actually move that sky around and you see how that works right there okay so I'll just leave this uh, here for now this is quite good and for one last step here what I want to do here is to create um, some atmospheric um, loss in the image here so what would happen is I find that um, if, if you can imagine where a, a, a very strong light source would be and I think around around the horizon is an obvious choice here is to actually add uh, a radial uh, gradient so that it's it's more white here it just fades from white to the actual sky so it looks more atmospheric so I'll show you how you do this uh, you have to be on the layer mask here even though it's unlocked you have to be on the on the layer mask and then you hold down the control and you'll see that the little hand icon changes to the little marching ant box and we want to click on that so that we are reselecting or making our selection again now I want to hide that selection just so it's not distracting me so I'm gonna uh, hold down control and H so that it's hiding the selection is still there you can press control and H again to show it again so we're just gonna hide that selection even though it's there and now we're gonna go into our um, gradient tool we're gonna select the radial gradient and we're gonna make sure that we are on white to black here so those are the settings here, the first selection of the gradient. And now what we want to do is, um, holding down the shift if you like, you can click and drag up, and what they'll do is just create a white circle from the center and then fade out to black, which essentially will remain the the layer mask will remain the same. So you can you can redo this if you like, if you if you find that you need more of a white over there or a smaller amount of whiteness so it's just a matter of, of drawing that effect that you like um, I think this is working pretty well so I'll just leave it at this and there you are so we're gonna do here just a quick before and the after and that looks pretty believable to me if you enjoyed this video show your support by subscribing rating and adding it to favorites leave comments on our website and we'll create even more videos that interest you